we we've got to get better at doing Christmas because <laughs> we suck. <laughs> <laughs> We're so tired, though. I know. I mean, there's so many things that I wish I had online to sell right now, and I just don't have. And... But I really think going into this year, not doing the... Not doing wholesale. Not doing the wholesale, other stuff. I think we can really concentrate on our own stuff. Yeah. And that's what we need to be concentrating on. We don't need to make anybody else any money. Not enough of that in my life. Yeah, it just became too much. Yeah. Just, just too much. And what we can do online is just nuts compared comparatively. Yeah. So it's, it's just, crazy. And I think it's I think it's like artisans or, or craftspeople, it's hard. Because you see that big order of somebody wanting, you know, 20 or 25 of something. And you think, wow, it's a big order. You know, and you kind of ignore the money side of things. And then when you really get to looking at it, you You're realize like, oh, geez. That, the, that the wholesale stuff just isn't doing you any good. Yeah. It doesn't do you any good. And I think just about everybody you talked to, like talking with Jeff last weekend, he did some like commission orders. And I think kind of when you start out, everybody sees that as, you know, that's that's the good stuff. That's what you want to be doing. But man, <laughs> it just gets to be hard after a while. And you're working too hard. And like he said, he didn't like holding on to people's money. And that's why commission stuff, I just, other than my Etsy stores, you know that way they pay you and then you do it but otherwise i never take the money until the work's done yeah because my dad was that way on stuff he never took the money until the work was done and it's just a good way to be makes you get the work done but i uh i just i can't keep up i i just can't keep up anymore Demand's too great, and there's just one of me. And, yeah. I mean, I'll be rich at it, but it's kind of nice having demand for your stuff, reaching that point where you you have that demand, but... And then it just becomes a game of supplying the demand. <laughs> yeah, and then that's where you are. Then it's that game of supplying that demand, and wowzer. I mean, we hit the social media and online stuff hard this past year. And now we have the demand up for the tools. And no tools. And we have no tools, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. You just, you get to where you cannot, you cannot meet every de demand criteria that's out there because people want things. Yeah. And they just, after a while, man, they really heat you up. And I mean, I, I try to help out some, but it's really, you know, like a one and a half man shop. Because I can just kind of cut and help. Well, and you've got a whole other yeah. business, as uh, I do too, more or less. Yeah. I mean, between the engraving and the Etsy store with the paintings, it's kind of a whole other business beyond the tools and the camping stuff and then the carvings. I mean, we joke about it, but we work seven days a week most of the time. Yeah. It's, it's funny, people at shows asking us if this is our job, and it's like, well, this is one. This is one of them, you know. It's like the overtime joke, you know. Yeah. Well, I've worked overtime for the last, I don't know. Seven months. <laughs> I There was somebody said something last night on Facebook, and I said, yeah, I said, my next day off will be probably New Year's. I'll probably take New Year's Day off. And they said, well, that's like seven, eight weeks away. I said, yeah, what's yeah. your point? I said, right now, there's no. I mean, you just work. That's what Pays and I talk about. Is like it, it stinks, but also it's great. It stinks that you spend your holidays that everybody else is looking at relaxing, and and we're spending it working our tails off, getting stuff ready because it's, I don't know, like a quarter of our year. I think. Oh at least yeah. For Paisley and I, it's a quarter of our year easily. Yeah. And you can't just ignore that quarter. No, you can't. You can't. If you're an independent artist and 
and you have things that go well in the holidays, you can't just write off that holiday season because you don't want to work. I joked last year, and maybe I need to be more serious about it, but like Christmas in July for artisans yeah. and craftspeople is like 4th of July is our Christmas because nobody's buying anything. <laughs> it's nice weather. We can go out and do something. Yeah. You can actually enjoy yourself a little bit in the summer, but it gets rough this time of year because you're just, you work all the time. It's, and even then, it's often, it's just not enough. No, I mean, I think you could have double the carvings right now for these shows and be in a really good spot. Yes. Yeah. Because what I have left over will sell after the, the last little show there on the 7th. Then I'll hit online with what I have left. And move them out. And that's what you do. I mean, you just keep after it until you... Until December 26th. Until, yeah. And the thing is, that day after Christmas is okay, and you kind of get that off a little bit, but then a lot of it's going back is you have people that didn't get things they thought they were getting, or got a little money or got a little money yeah and want something that's right because last year our january was as good as our november yeah it's a killer january can be just a, another one of those killer months and so you you don't really get to relax right then it's still you're still going and then our first indoor show is back in february, february. and then our biggest indoor shows in march and so we're and right then, back in the saddle, gearing back <laughs> up. And then this past year, we were totally caught off by Father's Day. Yeah, which Father's Day just tromped us. Was surprising because it, the leading up to that was just after our, uh, the Kalamazoo show there in March. Yeah. So we didn't have a whole lot, and then all of a sudden, we just—I mean, I'll we admit, again. yeah, I wasn't watching it at all. But we just got slammed again, and then you. <laughs> You have that slam, and then you're into the fall shows, and then you're right into the holidays again. <laughs> That's just a recap of our last year of just, for a two-man shop, it's just nuts. And when Where both people are really working other jobs as well. That, yeah. That's the thing you just got to keep in mind. And this, granted, the jobs are here, but yeah, they're we still... Yeah, we both work at home. Uh, we still work out of here, but it doesn't matter. We're doing other things. I mean, I engrave a ton during those months, and it just is busy. It just gets really busy. Yeah, I mean, just looking at the last, this is in a way kind of a recap of this last year, but geez. So I remember when I was in California, I was texting you about, you know, people asking for stuff. And it just doesn't stop, which is good. I mean, it's that's what that, you want. It's yeah. the ultimate situation to have, but it keeps you on your toes. You can't just sit down and say, "Okay, well, I'm going to take a couple weeks off here and go do this." We aren't really in a position to do that. No. But it's great that people support you and, yeah. and are interested in what you do. I feel like the shop small movement has been going for about five years now maybe a little bit longer. And I really kind of think it's hit peak or it's hit a, a sustainable level that people, you're, I see normal people that aren't makers or, you know, artists in some fashion online talking about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, you just got to keep after it. I started those little wizard carvings then those little Gandalfs, you know. I haven't even gotten one finished yet. Because I got switched back over. The Christmas. Yeah, it's the Christmas. And I'm not saying those wouldn't sell as a Christmas item, but I don't have time to deal with them right now, to be real honest. I, just, I don't have time to hit the really Christmas themed stuff right now and rolling it as hard as I can. It's not what you think it is. I mean, everybody thinks you work for yourself, you can kind of do what you want. Well, 
you can and you can't because you have responsibilities to your business to fulfill those obligations of customers and things. And that keeps you hustling. Yeah. I mean, you have to stay after it all the time. People joke that being your own boss is a blessing and a curse because you get to tell yourself, you know, kind of what you want to be doing to a certain extent. But also, when you're your own boss, you don't necessarily respect labor laws. No, you don't respect labor laws at all. You just work all the time. And that's what you have to be really careful of, is you will work all the time. Because there's always something to do. Yeah. I mean, you get to where you have to consciously tell yourself, I'm taking this time off. Yeah. And forcibly put everything down that's work. Yes. Or you'll just work. Because that's what I find myself doing. If I sit down after dinner to watch TV, which would be like the first time I've not worked that day, I find myself getting on my phone and working. Yeah. Say, well, I'll go catch up here. I got a few people I need to get back with. Yeah, and, I need to talk to these people. And uh, in our communication time is not joking with friends. It's talking to people about orders and <laughs> delivery and it's that kind of stuff. It's not what people, everybody kind of thinks, well, yeah, you know, you're just on your phone. Well, no, actually, I'm dealing with things yeah. right now that I haven't dealt with because I've been working all day. Because when you're working, it's a pain in the butt to start talking to somebody. Right. And that was the thing yesterday. Uh, had a guy wanting a painting. And uh, so I kind of put that off, you know. Yeah. Until the evening when I could really sit down and have a conversation because I wasn't really able to do that during the day. Cause I had some, I had to run in town for fire department stuff and I had to do other things. And so I'm... I'm doing that all the time, and I had well actually, and then I had another lady about another painting last night that I was taking care of, and and it was it's just that's how that plays out for you. And most people are available in the evening to talk to, yeah. And so that's when I tend to have that conversation with customers and and things, and get back with them about stuff. And you're not really shorting anybody; you're just. Um, you have to allot that time. Yeah, you're just trying to keep up. Because if you, and that's what I find working, because I email, I mean, I, everybody I, I've really ever worked for for the past four or five years has been digitally. I'm, I've never seen most of the people I work with. So, like, Make there's smart. always emails coming in. either. And if I sit down and respond to every email as it comes in, that's all I do all day. Yeah, that's all you'll do. It's just all about time management. Yeah. In a sense, it's just... And you can't work for yourself if you don't have that. No, if you can't manage your time well, and if you can't make yourself work when you'd rather be doing other things, then you, you're you not going to do well at this. In many ways, like that's where I respect people that kind of keep it as a hobby. Yeah. You know, because it's always still fun. Yeah. Just, I mean, not always, but generally, it's still fun. And I I mean, I enjoy the work I do. It's oh, yeah. just that there are a lot of times when there are things you'd, you'd like to do a piece that you'd, you would really like to do, and you're doing something for somebody else, a commission or something at that time, you know, and it's kind of frustrating. But you don't always get to work on your own things, but on the other side of it, those commission pieces and stuff is often what generates the income that allows you to do some of the other things you do want to do so yeah i'm not saying always work for the dollar but a lot of times it's nice to work to have the dollar you know it's hard to throw that away yeah it is it's hard to not do that when it's and when you're your ceo and your accountant right <laughs> and you always know where the finances are in the business and so it's just kind of one of those things that you just keep doing. And, I mean, it's easy to look at it one way and talk about it and things, but right when you get down where the rubber meets the road, you have to make product, you have to market product, and you have to sell product. If you want to stay in business, that's the deal. And if you're not doing that, well, you're not going to be in business a long time. I'm just going to bring that knife over here. No life easier. Little paint flex and things that... When I'm painting, I look at it and I say, oh, I'll just catch that with the knife later. And that's what I do. I just come back, and grab my knife, and go after them. 
it's just easier to grab that knife and fix something than to piddle around trying to do it some other way. I didn't get any of the Santa ornaments made. I just never got that far. I have people wanting them, but hopefully I come off of this show with a few pieces left over and then I can leave those in inventory and then make some new stuff for the next little show. And yeah. Every time I asked you what you were doing for the past couple of weeks, it's been carving mostly. Yeah. I mean, you, you did some engraving there, but it's been carving. And I got another engraving job I got to do. I've got two watercolors, really three watercolor house portraits, and an engraving job that I've got to get out. And I always tell the engraving customers, do not talk to me these months. But one of them will always come up, man, I got this just little job, but I, I really need it. And that turns into a whole gun. And it turns into a whole other project, and off you go on that. And this is just a barrel, but I'm setting platinum wire in it. Then I got a guy I need to email back on another job where we're going to set some gold in a barrel. He's got a couple questions about that. And so on and on it goes. I can truly say I'm hardly ever bored looking for something to do. We need some elves. Yeah, I need elves. If you know where the elves live, send them to me. <laughs>